a pregnant woman vanishes, and it seems pretty obvious what happened and who may have done it, but nobody has ever been arrested. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of Christine Kupka. Viewer discretion is advised. quick before we get started of course hello my name is mike if you're new to the channel i tell three true crime stories every single week here on youtube on mondays wednesdays and fridays so feel free to subscribe if you're into that kind of thing you're a cuckoo cuckoo wackadoo like the rest of us give this video a like so more people can see it yada 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 i also tell short form true crime stories over on tiktok where i'm probably more known i have around three million ish followers over there if you want to check that out, go ahead. It will be linked in the link tree in the description of this video below. The link also pops up here at the beginning and also at the end of the video. So check it out if you want. Also in the link tree below is my merch store. We sell like t-shirts and hoodies and stuff and we do ship all over this entire planet. So check that out too if you want to. You don't gotta, but you can if you want. And then lastly, if there's a case you want me to cover, just email me. My email is listed below. Email me the name of the individual, where it happened, when it happened. I'll add it to the list. As of right now, I have over 5,700 names on that list. I pick my cases at random, so it may be a while before I get to that case, but I will get to it at some point in the future. I mean, stop it. Okay. But anyway, let us get into today's case, shall we? We shall. Okay. Again, stop. Christine Kupka was born in Madison, Wisconsin, and that's pretty much where she was raised. She had two sisters. She grew up in a very loving household. Her sisters were like her best friends. After she graduated high school, at some point, she would move to Atlanta, Georgia. She lived there briefly, but then she would find herself in New York City. Christine was always a highly intelligent individual. She had a nearly 4.0 GPA, and she was someone who wanted to use her intelligence to eventually make some kind of difference in the world. She was, at the time of this case, I believe attending Baruch College, and to make ends meet, she was working as a waitress at a restaurant in Queens. She lived in a pretty decent sized house that she actually shared with, I believe, five roommates. And by the time this case happened, she had been living in New York City for roughly three years or so. During her time at Baruch College, she would take a chemistry class. Well, it was taught by a professor named Darshanand Persad, but he would go by Rudy. Apparently, she became very smitten with her professor. Rudy was this kind of quiet, shy, almost introverted guy, which she really liked because she was sort of the opposite. She was outgoing and was not afraid to say what was on her mind. And apparently, the two of them started dating shortly after Christine was done with the chemistry class. Rudy said that he was single and that he was, you know, happy to be in this relationship. He was working full time as a teacher at the college, but he was also working towards getting his dentistry degree. The two of them, Christine and Rudy, both had very busy lives. They didn't really see each other all that much. But at first, it, it all appeared that they had a really happy relationship. Well, uh, one day, Christine would inform Rudy that she was pregnant and the baby had to have been his. He said, no, that's not possible. It can't be mine. He told her, well, it's impossible because, you know, I've had procedures done where I can't have children. But Christine was like, you're the only person I've been with, so it's yours. This is your baby. And Christine was persistent with him. Like, this is your kid. This has to be your child. I am telling you, th this is your baby. And so eventually he was like, okay, I guess it's my baby. Well, I probably lied about that medical procedure I told you I had. It was a lie. Because the truth of the matter is, is that Rudy was married. As a matter of fact, apparently, he married a person while he was in the middle of dating Christine. He had gotten married during a time that he told Christine that he was on a business trip. He never was on a business trip. But that's the reason why Rudy says, no one can know about this baby. You need to 
have an abortion. You need to, you know, get rid of the baby because it'll bring shame on me and it'll bring shame on my family. Rudy had been an immigrant from Guyana. His dad was a Hindu priest and religion played a humongous part, obviously, in their lives, given that he was a priest. And to have a son who had an illegitimate child would bring massive shame and disappointment upon this entire family, and their family could be disowned, mainly by the temple, because I guess the temple didn't really had these values that didn't really mesh well with having babies in this particular fashion. And so Rudy could be kicked out of the temple, as could his dad, who was a priest. And so Rudy kept telling Christine, have an abortion, get rid of this baby. It cannot happen. My family cannot know about this baby. Christine was like, almost in shock. She's like, what? No. I. She was excited to be a mom. She wanted to be a mom. It was one of her lifelong dreams to be a mother, and she would be an amazing mother. And so she said, fine, I'm, we're just, I'm cutting you out of my life. And that's what she tried to do at first. But she was clear to Rudy, like, I'm not going to ruin your life. I'm not, I will cut ties with you, but I'm also not going to like jeopardize your life and your place in this church. And I'm not going to try to ruin your marriage. All I want is for you to at least participate in, in, raising this child. That's it. We don't have to be romantically involved. Everyone doesn't need to know all of the backstory. I just would hope that you would be involved in the baby's life. And T was like, I can't. I can't do that because people would, would find out. She was like, well, I'm going to be putting you on the birth certificate because I need to because you're the father of this baby. And she kept telling him it's best for the child to have a good relationship with both of its parents, including the baby's father. As a couple of months goes on, Christine begins to tell her friends and family that Rudy is kind of scaring her at this point because he is being very adamant and very demanding, almost in a scary way that, you know, she needs to get rid of the baby. It got to a point where Christine was afraid of Rudy. She wasn't sure if, if he was going to cause harm to her or do something to get rid of the baby on himself. And so Christine became jumpy. She became very uh, nervous and anxious. And she was kind of afraid to be out in public because she didn't know what Rudy may try to do. Christine said, well, told Rudy, like, I need you to sign this form. It's an acknowledgement of paternity just for the birth certificate. This caused a fight between the two of them. Afterwards, Christine tried to get a hold of him again by use, by paging his pager and she got a call back but it wasn't from Rudy it was from Rudy's wife the wife was like who is this because you know she heard the voice of another woman like what what are you doing with my husband and so Christine was like oh I'm just a student of his and I had questions about an assignment or something but as the two of them continued talking Christine just basically told her the truth like listen I we were dating I got pregnant he's the father Christine told Rudy's wife, I have no intention of ruining your marriage. I don't want to get involved. I have, I want nothing to do with Rudy in terms of being involved with him romantically. I just want him to acknowledge that he is the father and maybe take some part in this in raising this child. And so Rudy's wife, she's like, oh God, she's like, God damn it. He's ruined my life now. And, and so the two of them, the two women kind of sort of bonded for, you know, a brief time over this. But after a few phone calls, Christine never really heard again from Rudy's wife. And then a couple of weeks after that conversation, those conversations, Rudy shows up at Christine's house kind of like in a panic, in a huff. He said that his wife told his parents about the baby and now it's going to get him kicked out of out of the temple. It's going to get his family kicked out of the temple. He was living with his parents, but they kicked him out of the house. And now he's living with other family members in Queens. Meanwhile, Christine is far along enough now where an abortion is not an option. And she's already chosen like the midwife. She's chosen where she's going to have the baby. It's done deal. This is, this is happening. At this point, she's about five, close to six months pregnant. Rudy, essentially, because now everyone had abandoned him and left him, he's was trying to get back in good graces with Christine. She let him back into her life, not as a romantic partner, but just as 
the father of the baby. Suddenly, Rudy seemed to be okay with now being a father to this baby. He, he seemed jovial about it. He was happy about it. He was like, oh, okay, I'm going to be a dad. And again, Christine did not want to be involved with him romantically. She was actually trying to encourage him to go speak to his wife, who he's now kind of estranged from, and say, like, try to, you know, get back together with her so that he can be happy with his wife, but also just sort of be there for this baby. The fears and the concerns about her well-being that she had had over the recent few months about Rudy maybe doing something to her seemed to subside and go away, and she seemed to become comfortable with Rudy again. On the morning of October 24th, 1998, Christine would leave a voicemail for her sister, Kathy. She said to Kathy that Rudy got a new apartment, and Rudy has asked me if I would come over to look at the apartment, but also help clean it and get it set up and everything. And Christine seemed to be in a pretty good mood on this voicemail. Later that afternoon, Rudy would go to Christine's apartment because he they arranged that he would pick her up to bring her over to his apartment. But she was still getting ready. So while he was in the house, a couple of Christine's roommates noticed that Rudy appeared to be a bit irritated, upset, agitated. Something seemed off about the guy. He was pacing in, in the house. He just seemed strange. His behavior seemed kind of... He just seemed out of sorts. The following day, October 25th, 1998, one of Christine's roommates would call Christine's sister Kathy to say that Christine never came home last night and she still isn't here today and they couldn't seem to get a hold of her. Christine was supposed to be back later that uh, early evening-ish because Rudy was supposed to drop her off, but that never happened. So Kathy and her husband, they end up just driving to Brooklyn and they go into the 70th precinct to say, I think... I want to file a missing persons report because they had gone to Christine's house before they went to the precinct and noticed that she still wasn't home and they didn't know where she was. And so they were concerned to given how inconsistent Rudy had been about this baby and how Christine had been afraid of him for some time. So they wanted to file a missing persons report, but the police were like, no, we can't do that. She's an adult. She's probably just out on her own. So sorry, can't do it. Bye. About three or four days later, when they still hadn't been able to find Christine because they had gone out just looking for her on their own, they go back to police and say, okay, it's now been three days. She's still missing. She's pregnant and she's just gone. And she's not supposed to be gone. She's supposed to be here. And police are finally like, oh, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll help you guys now. Okay, great, thanks. Christine's sister and family and friends and the roommates and coworkers and people from school they all kind of band together. They start to canvas the neighborhood surrounding where Christine lived and also in the area where Rudy's apartment was. They were just sort of canvassing and searching and talking to everyone, knocking on doors, passing out flyers, doing everything they could to see if anyone knew anything. They would go on the news and they would put out a plea for help to anyone who may know anything about where she is. Please come forward. Again, she is five months pregnant and she, she'll need medical assistance at some point soon, but deep down they knew something had probably happened to her. About a week and a half to two weeks later, Rudy would finally, with a lawyer, talk to police. He said, I will fully cooperate with you guys, but Rudy did not have a confirmed alibi. He could not prove where he was during the time he was supposed to be with Christine. However, he said that he took Christine to, I guess, uh, a mall there in Queens. And he sat in the car in the parking lot while she went inside and did some shopping. She came back out after some time. Then he says he dropped her off at a health food store, which would be near her house. And that was around 4 p.m. on that October 24th, 1998 day. He made absolutely no mention to police, however, about going to his apartment to show Christine the apartment to have her help, you know, set things up. But Christine says that was what the plan was. She made no mention to her sister or her roommates about going shopping, going to a health food store. She only ever said, Rudy is picking me up to take me back to his apartment that he just got. And so police were a little concerned, like, why, what's going on here? But he really wouldn't say anything about that. Police would go to the mall that he said he had dropped Christine off at. They would go to the health food store and I guess various other businesses that they had apparently stopped by that day. Nobody can recall seeing Christine 
at those locations. Now, obviously, this is a very busy place. You know, this is Queens. This is there's a lot of activity, and so to remember something like one individual person and all that would be kind of difficult. But I don't know if they checked CCTV footage of, or not. If they had any, you know, this is 1998. I know it wasn't as common, but I don't know if they've checked that. But they never found any evidence or proof that. Christine had been at the mall, at the health food store, or anywhere else. But with this acknowledgement, Rudy is essentially stating that he was the last person to see her. That was it. Police can't do anything with that. They can't be like, well, you were the last one to be with her, so you must have killed her, right? But there was no evidence or proof of that. They did not have the probable cause to get a warrant to search any of these premises like Rudy's apartment or anywhere. There was no signs anywhere of foul play. There was, they didn't find blood anywhere. They didn't find anything. There was rumors amongst the community that perhaps Rudy had killed her and buried her underneath a business that his cousins owned. It wouldn't be until 2010 when Rudy's family who owned that business finally no longer owned that business and they vacated the premises and police were able to get a warrant then to search that business. The new people who had moved in allowed them to do it. They brought in a cadaver dog first and the cadaver dogs did pick up on something. They picked up on the remains of something, something dead. So they end up excavating and digging underneath this business, but unfortunately they do not find anything. There are no human remains or anything along the li those lines. The cadaver dog picking up on the scent, however, could indicate that at some point, Christine may have been buried there, but maybe once the family was leaving the business, maybe they dug her up and moved her before anyone could do anything. And so the police, again, are kind of back at, at square one. There, there is no, they have no proof or physical evidence that Rudy caused any physical harm to Christine Kupka. The only thing they have is a motive. It's a pretty strong motive. It's a common motive, right? She was having a baby that he did, clearly did not want her to keep or have. He was extremely persistent about it. Many witnesses could claim that he did not want her to have this baby for several personal reasons of his own. She may, he may have seen it as that she ruined his marriage, even though it was him who ruined his own marriage. Maybe he blamed her for being kicked out potentially of the temple. And so there is that very strong motive, but you also need evidence. Christine's bank accounts have never been touched since the day she vanished. Christine's social security number has never been used since the day she vanished, meaning she's never used her social security number ever again to apply for a job, apply for credit cards or any kind of credit, apply for apartments or houses. These are, this is something you, you use your social security number, obviously you all know that you use it a lot for your everyday life and hers has never been touched. The police in New York firmly believe that at this point that Christine did meet with foul play. And it sounds like they have every thought in their minds that Rudy Prasad is the one to have caused that foul play to Christine. They believe that Christine is no longer on this earth. Her family has since gone on like newscasts where the news reporters have asked like her sister, do you think Christine is still alive? And the family was very adamant, no, we don't think she's alive. We pretty much are sure that she is dead, but we deserve to have her back and we deserve to bury her. Everybody knows that Christine is, is gone because you don't just, you can't be five months pregnant, fall off the face of the earth and have no indications the baby was ever born, have no, and then not exist ever, ever again in the real world without using your bank account, without using your social security number, and not to mention without ever being physically seen by, I mean, her picture and image was everywhere. This was New York. Everybody knew Christine Kupka's face. Nobody had seen her. And then outside of New York, you had her, her image was all over the place. And I think she was even on the cover of a magazine at one point. Nobody, nobody has ever seen her. Christine Kupka is, is clearly deceased. And it is more than obvious that she was murdered. And it was more than obvious who likely, allegedly, did it. But they just don't have the proof. 
They don't have a body. They don't have a crime scene. They don't have any signs of foul play anywhere. Christine was 28 years old and five months pregnant at the time of her disappearance in October of 1998. She was supposed to give birth either in February or early March. They checked hospitals and there were no records of, of this happening. Rudy has moved on with his life. As a matter of fact, he moved to Florida with his wife. I don't know if it's his a new wife or the same woman he was with during all of this, but he now, <laughs> He now has three children with this wife. He has, the news outlets have tried to talk to him, but he refuses to talk to anyone in the press. He will not address the story. He will never address Christine publicly, he says. He says, I have no knowledge of what happened to Christine and that's it. He's also uh, shown no signs of giving two flying shits about what happened to her. No emotions, no concern, nothing. He now has gotten to his dream. He uh, is a dentist in Florida. That's what he was going to school for. So he got to do what he wanted to do. But Christine did not. Christine was excited to be a mom. She was excited for her future and to get a career she wanted to do. She never got to do that. Christine and her unborn child are alone out there somewhere. Christine and her unborn child are probably just in the ground somewhere out there in the world. People may walk over where they are all the time, but nobody knows it. Christine does not get to be a mom. She does not get the career she wanted. She does not get to share in the joy of motherhood with her family and her sisters, her friends. But the person who may have allegedly taken her away from the world, he does get to do all of that. He gets to live his life. He gets to have the career he wanted. He gets to be married. He gets to be happy. He gets to live. Somebody somewhere out there has got to know the truth. Killers love to talk, right? But Rudy is a smart guy. He may know not to talk to anyone, but there's gotta be something. There's gotta be some kind of evidence. There's gotta be some kind of, of anything, at the very least to know where Christine was put. And if that person is you, if you are the person who knows what happened to Christine Kupka in October of 1998, please contact the New York Police Department. You can call them at 646-610-6914. You can report your information anonymously. You do not have to say who you are. You just have to say what you know. And hopefully one day Christine Kupka and her unborn child will get the justice they rightfully deserve. But that is it for this case, True Crime or Rooney Dooney Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. Please subscribe, give this video a like, follow me over on TikTok, check out the merch. I gotta wrap up because my battery is dying. Let me wrap up like I always do. So let me wrap up this video by telling a joke, a dad joke from the game Live, Live Laugh, Lose, but I'll do so with a celebrity impression of Robert De Niro. Hey, wanna hear a joke? Huh? You want to you want to hear a joke? You talking to me? Huh? <laughs> what does a baby computer call his father? Huh? What does a baby computer call his father? He calls him data. That yeah, fuck this card. Okay. How about another joke? Huh? <laughs> hey, why did Mozart sell his chickens? Huh? Because they kept saying, bok, bok, bok. Okay. <clears throat> Robert De Niro's face hurts a lot. It sucks to be Robert De Niro, I guess. Anyway. Bye-bye. <laughs>